Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Junko Takekawa, Senior Arts Program Officer of Japan Foundation London. Thank you for joining this online talk event, Ke uh, talk event Keiichiro Hirano in Conversation. This event is presented in partnership with the Times and the Sunday Times Cheltenham Literature Festival, which is currently on Cheltenham. For this uh, year at Cheltenham Literature Festival, we have managed to invite two authors, Kikko Tsumura and Keiichiro Hirano from Japan, and their pre-recording interview is still available to watch on the festival YouTube site until the end of December. So if you haven't watched it, please do. It is highly recommended. Today, following Ms. Tsumura's live session on Thursday, I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Hirano for this live talk event. I had been longing for his works to be translated into English so that many global readers could get to know his writing and the world. In my opinion, he's one of the accomplished Japanese authors. His page turning novels always have philosophical elements and deal with social issues. Some readers may find it work difficult to read, but it always leaves a lasting impression on me. Fortunately, after long wait, two of his books are available in English. At the end of the matinee and the man. I show you the books. This is Japanese book of that at the end of the matinee. And then this is the English version. And then this is the Japanese version of a man. Unfortunately, a man in English version is my Kindle, so I can't show it, but um, um, it's a uh, uh, cover page is, is very different. As the pre-recording interview mainly touched upon at the end of matinee, today's session will focus on his other book, A Man. Thank you for your time, Mr. Hirano. A Man was translated by our, our other speaker, Eli K.P. William. He's actually a British Canadian science fiction author. And then I'm very intrigued to know how he came to translate Mr. Hirano's book, which sounds very different from the type of writing. Thank you, Eli, for joining us today. And then I would like to welcome back Kate Griffin, Associate Program Director at the National Center for Writing as a moderator of this session. On Thursday, he, she asked a number of very interesting questions and I'm sure that with Mr. Hirano and Eli this session will be also stimulating and informative. Next housekeeping matters. Today's event will be recorded as we are using webinar function your names will not be viewable by other attendees. However I strongly recommend you to keep your audio video muted throughout just in case. Um, my apology is that um, a gentleman popped in up in sometimes area, but he's not Mr. Hirano, he's our director general. Anyway, if you have any question for the panelists, please use the Q&A function to send in question at any time. Remember that the attendees question may be seen by everyone else so that you can afford a particular question placed by another person which you would like to answer, or if it is the same as yours. Simply click the thumb up icon next to the question you wish to vote. Unfortunately, due to time restrictions, we may not be able to pick up all of the questions you asked. So my apologies in advance. That's all from me. Now I would like to um, welcome and then hand, hand it over to Kate, Mr. Hirano and Eli. Um, Mr. Hirano will be interpreted by Bethan Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much, Junko, and welcome, everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be in conversation this afternoon with Keichiro Hirano and Eli K.P. William. I'm also very grateful to Beth and Jones for interpreting this event. As Junko said, Keichiro Hirano has two novels now available in English translation. At the End of the Matinee, which was translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter, and A Man, translated by Eli William. 
please do put your questions about either of the two novels in the Q&A box whenever they occur to you. Um, this event is meant to be a conversation with you, the audience, um, so I will be opening up to questions later on in the event. But first, I'll start with a couple of my own. I actually want to start with a question about At the End of the Matinee, which is a beautiful love story between Makino, a classical guitarist, and Yoko, a journalist. In the prologue, you say, but while fiction makes it possible to refrain from revealing some secrets, it is the only way to reveal others. Could you tell us more about this, Hironisan? はい、えっと、まず僕の答えは大体長くなりがちなんで今日は少しずつ区切ってあの翻訳してもらいながら話そうと思います。なぜ人は文学を読むかというと一つの理由はなかなか普段の日常の会話の中では人と共有できない秘密だとか、まあ、苦悩だとか。あるいはまあ繊細な日常会話にあまりにも繊細すぎるような話題だとかっていうのをシェアするために文学作品を読むというふうに僕は考えるんですね。Firstly, I think the reason we read literature is to be able to share things that we can't necessarily share in everyday conversation, secrets or struggles that we face, or things that are just too sensitive and delicate to talk about day to day. そしてまあこの平野啓一郎という自分の名前を持ってはなかなか語り得ないこともこれはフィクションなんですという形を取ることによって非常に自由に書くことができるという利点が小説にはあります。The benefit of a, no of a novel is that I can write things freely、um, because it is fiction, that I am not able to say as myself, as Keiichi Hirano. Keiichi Hirano. 例えば不倫はいいことですか平野さんというふうに聞かれるとまあそれはいいことじゃないですねと言うしかないわけですがこれはあくまでフィクションの中で不倫というものを描こうとすれば、えー、必ずしもそう単純には言い切れないような、えー、問題あるいはその中での非常に繊細な心というのを描くことができます例えばトルストイの「アンナ・カレインナ」というような小説は、まあ、典型的な作品ですけどもまあフィクションにはそういう良さがあるわけですね。For example, if someone were to ask me, Keiichi or Hirano, whether adulter adultery is a good thing, I would have to say, of course not. But in fiction, I can show that it's not actually that straightforward an issue, that there are nuances, that it's delicate.、Um, and, and you end up with,、uh, with novels like Anna Karenina by Tolstoy, of course, things like that.、That's, that is one of the benefits of fiction. ですから、この小説も一応モデルという人はいて。もしそのモデルに忠実に書こうとすると、やっぱり書くことができないことってのはたくさん出てくるんですけど、あくまでフィクションだという、えー、形を取ることによって、えー、どんなことでも書けるということを最初に、えー、序文の中で、えー、言いました。So I wanted to bring that up in the prologue, the fact that、uh, if, I was right, if I was trying to, to say this in real life, there are things that,、uh, that I couldn't say, but that I can because this is fiction. Thank you, Hirano san.、Um, as Junko said, if you do want to hear more about At the End of the Matinee, do check out the recording of the conversation between Hirano san and Susie Fay from earlier this week, as they do talk in some detail about the novel.、Um, but most of my questions today will focus on Hirano san's novel, A Man, as we are joined by the book's translator, Eli William. So I'd like to start with a short reading by you both from A Man. Um, Hirano san will read in Japanese and then Eli will read the same passage in English translation.、Um, Hirano san, could you tell us about the novel and introduce the passage you're going to read? Thank you. Hi, this book is a book of the 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 book. で亡くなった後実は彼が自分がこう信じていたのとは全く違う人間でその生まれも育ちも聞かされたのが全部嘘だということに気がつきますでじゃあ一体自分が結婚したのは誰だったのかということを、えー、知りたいと思い知り合いの弁護士である木戸という、まあ、主人公の男性に
その自分の夫が誰かを調べてほしいということを調査するように依頼します。でこれがまあこのものだそこから物語が始まるわけです。The story starts with、uh, a woman in, the, in rural Japan who is happily married, whose husband suddenly dies.、Uh, and after he dies, she discovers that he is a completely different person to the one that she believed him to be, that everything she, he had told her about his background、uh, is actually a lie. So she starts to question who it was that she married, and she、uh, seeks out、uh, a lawyer. Acquaintance of hers, who is the protagonist of the novel, Kido, and asks him to find out who her husband was. And that's where the story begins. 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 The part I'm going to read、uh, from the prologue is where the writer、uh, of the story. Meets Kido in a bar. この最初の嘘をめぐるやり取りを除けば、木戸さんは気さくで落ち着いた好人物だった。感じやすい繊細な心を持っていて、しかも言葉の端々からは、奥深い、複雑な性格がうかがわれた。私は彼と話をしているのが心地よかった。こちらの言うことがよく通じ、相手の言っていることがまた、よくわかったからであるそういう人にはなかなか出会えないものではあるまいか音楽好きというのも二人の重要な接点だったそれで偽名を使うのも何かよほどの事情があるのだろうと忖度したのだった次に同じ曜日にその店を訪れた時にもやはり木戸さんは一人でカウンターで飲んでいて私は勧められて隣に座ったマスターの定位置からは遠い席で、以後、私たちは何度となく、この店のその席で顔を合わせ、夜更けまで語らい合う仲となった。彼はいつもウォッカを飲んでいた。送信の割に酒が強く、本人は気持ちよく酔っているというが、その口調は穏やかで、何時間経っても変わることがなかった。私たちは親しくなった。いい飲み友達ができるというのは、中年になると案外珍しいことである。しかし、二人の関係はただこの店のカウンターに限られていて、どちらも連絡先を尋ねようとはしなかった。彼はおそらく遠慮していた。私はというと、正直なところ、まだ警戒もしていた。そして実は、もう長らく彼とは会っておらず、多分、二度と会うこともないだろう。彼が店を訪れなくなったことを、その必要がなくなったこと、私は良い意味に解釈している。Thank you very much, y o u r Honor San.、Um, Eli, could you read us the English translation and also maybe flash us the cover since I see you've got a copy of the English translation?、Mm-hmm. Lovely, thank you. Aside from this initial exchange revolving around his lie, Kido San was an unaffected, affable, collected person. He had a sensitive and receptive mind, and in his every word, one could sense a character of great depth and complexity. I felt comfortable talking with him. Whatever I wanted to get across, he understood well, and his meaning in turn was as clear as day to me. We also found commonality in our love for music. I appreciated how rare it was to come across someone like this, and I sensed that there had to be extenuating circumstances that explained his need to lie. The next time I visited that bar on the same night of the week, Kido san was drinking alone again as I'd expected, and I sat down beside him at his invitation in a seat somewhat removed from the bartender's post. A number of times afterward, we shared each other's company in those same seats and grew intimate enough that we would talk late into the night. His drink of choice was vodka. Despite his lean build, he could definitely hold his liquor. And would claim to be pleasantly tipsy, even though he never seemed to change, his tone of voice remaining always composed. The two of us became something like friends. Making a new drinking buddy with whom you form a deep connection is surprisingly rare in middle age. But our relationship was limited to the counter of that establishment, and neither of us sought the other's contact information. 
he probably felt uncomfortable asking. For my part, the truth is that I was still wary of him. In fact, I have not seen him in quite some time and doubt that I ever will again. He is no longer visiting that bar, no longer feeling the need to do so, I interpret as a positive sign. Thank you very much. Um, Hirona-san, I'm struck by the phrase in that passage, the two of us became something like friends. Hmm. What relationship do you have with your protagonist? I mean, in this prologue, you indicate, and in the prologue of At the End of the Matinee, hmm. you indicate that you're writing about real people, friends. Should we believe this? うん。まあ、序文っていうのはあくまで小説の一部ですので、まあ、本当に本当なのか、それとも小本当と書かれてるけど、やっぱりフィクションなのか。その辺はまあ、読者が想像を楽しむ部分じゃないかなと思います。The prologue is part of the novel, so whether it is true or whether it is fiction written as if true, uh, I think is something that the reader can enjoy pondering. In the case of a man, it's actually quite uh, complicated. まあ、2010年代に日本でもま、世界的な風潮ではありましたが、排外主義運動というのは非常に盛んになって、その中でま、長年差別されてきた在日朝鮮人に対する差別というのは非常に激しくなっていました。There was a, a trend in Japan uh, around 2010, maybe a trend globally of, of xenophobia. Uh, and in Japan, that manifested particularly as, um, uh, as resistance towards the, the Korean population in Japan. The Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-Japanese-
And so, whereas I couldn't write from the point of view of someone suffering discrimination, I could, I felt, write from the point of view of someone concerned about their friend, um, which is why I decided that that the writer needed to be a friend of the protagonist. Thank you, thank you. Um, a Man is a deeply literary novel about multiple identities and human reinvention, exploring both love and philosophy. However, it's also been described as a psychological thriller. Um, your main character, Kido, is a lawyer turned detective and the story is as page turning as any thriller. Um, can I ask you what drew you, what drew you to combine literary fiction mm. with a detective story, and were there particular challenges to writing mm. a literary psychological thriller? Mm. So, this is a little bit of a thriller to your genre of sources, or Hotondo, Matakoimasen. まあ、ちょっと近いというと、レイモンド・チャンドラーの小説を何冊か読んだっていうぐらいですけど、まあ、正直、あんまり詳しくもないんですね。I'm not really that familiar with, with thrillers as a, as a genre. I've read a few of Raymond Chandler's novels, but、um, it's not something I'm overly familiar with. ただ、僕はドストエスキーの影響を非常に強く受けたんですね。で、罪と罰だとか、カラマゾフの兄弟という小説は、えー、非常に深い哲学的、社会的な問いを含んでいますが、プロットだけを取ると、えー、犯人探しだとかですね、謎解きといった要素が、えー、非常に強い、えー、お話になっています。I have, however, been very influenced by Dostoevsky, and if you look at things like Crime and Punishment or The Brothers Karamazov, they Depict, they ask questions about society and about philosophy. But if you take just the plot, there is a, a mystery to be solved.、Um, or they do, they do have that, that sense of plot development. The book is in the sense of the plot 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 is in the sense of the plot. その読者にはそのプロットのラインでは純粋に小説を読むことを楽しんでもらいたいと思ってるんですね。でその楽しんで読みながらいつしかその深い哲学的な問い、社会的な問いに読者の関心が導かれていくというのが、えー、僕の小説のスタイルです。My novels are made up of complex layers. They do feature Social issues, they do feature、uh, philosophical issues, but they also have a simple plot line that、uh, an audience can follow along and enjoy, and then at some point get pulled into these deeper issues. The Ningen and Totte Motomo, Tsui, Kansin, to you know, are Hitots, or Yapari, Shiritai to Yokubo Nanda to Mondesne, Nanikan Tsuite, Shiritai, to you know, a Hijoni Hitoko, Nodo Tekini Sasser Koto, de, Ma, Shosset no. では一体その X っていう人物が誰だったのかその亡くなった夫は誰だったのかということを読者は知りたいと思うんですがそれを知るには考え,らなければ考えなければいけない哲学的な問い社会的な問題というのがあってその知りたいという欲望が必然的に僕たちのこう固定観念というのを解きほぐして新しい思想に導くような作りにしたいと思っていて、えー、まあそういう意味ではミステリー的な要素っていうのは小説の中にありますけど、ミステリー小説を書くっていう意識はまあほとんど僕の中にはありません。I think one of the one of our greatest motivations can be curiosity, and the curiosity that readers have to find out who X is, who is the this lady's husband who's died.、Um, in order to discover that. They need to think about some of these social issues and some of these philosophical issues that are also there in the novel. And, but their curiosity will help them to overcome any resistance they have to that and draw them deeper. So there is that element of mystery, but I didn't set out to write、um, a mystery novel. Thank you.、Um, Eli. I was wondering what your take was on this、um, and whether there are any specific challenges related to translating this kind of literary mystery thriller.、Um, yeah,、uh, I understand、uh, both the 
phrases mystery and thriller from the perspective of a writer. And so um, I think of mystery, obviously, as a type of story in which there's a mystery. Um, usually it's about uh, someone who's died, uh, often someone who's been murdered. In the case of this novel, it's um, somebody who has died. And uh, so part of the mystery is it's not uh, it's it's not a who done it but um it's a question about uh who this person was and um so i definitely think that this novel has a strong element of uh, mystery to it um as to whether it's a thriller uh, my understanding of a thriller is that uh it's about um uh, the pursuit of the protagonist a, a thriller plot or the thriller genre is characterized by either a group of people, as in a political thriller, or maybe a serial thriller, as in other types of thrillers, or, uh, you know, robots in a techno thriller, uh, some, some forces pursuing the protagonist. And there is no pursuit narrative uh, in this novel. So I don't think the thriller phrase applies uh, in if it's used to refer to a genre. And um, actually, the, the first time I came across the word thriller in association with this novel was, uh, it's not mentioned in, in Japanese. Um, it was on the copy for uh, the translation that was put out by Crossing. And uh, I think they wanted to, to link the novel to a specific type of readership. And uh, I understand that impulse, but looking at some of the reader responses, for example, on Goodreads, I think it, it misled some people to expect a, a more uh, ultra fast paced sort of story. Whereas I, I see a man as uh, more contem contemplative and philosophical and thought provoking and uh, eye opening and, and often moving as well. Um, so in terms of uh, how that is related to translation, I, I don't really take plot into account when I translate. Um, so there weren't any particular translation challenges that arose from uh, the detective nature or putative uh, thriller nature of the novel. Um, but I will ask you what challenges there were shortly. Um, yeah. uh, Tashao describes the novel as a multi-layered tale of human reinvention. Um, Hirana-san, could you tell us what led you to this topic of reinvention and multiple identities? Um, there's also a question in the Q&A box that I think is, is linked to this from Ginny Levitt. She says, I'm intrigued by the prologue comment, what it's like to be honest through lies. Can you elucidate? And she says, many thanks. By the way, I loved reading The Man, A Man. Thank you. Hi. Identity has actually long been a, a, a theme that I've dealt with in my work. Uh, this isn't the first where I've taken on the, the topic of identity. なんの仕事をしているかというのがその人の社会的な評価に直結しがちなんですが、経済状態が悪くなるとですね、なかなか自分のやりたい仕事にもできない、つけない、あるいは仕事自体がないという人が増えてきますと、じゃあ一体自分
しかし人間には労働者としての側面もありますけども家庭,家庭人としての側面もあれば友達と一緒にいる時の自分とか、まあ、音楽仲間とバンドやってる時の自分とか、まあ、ゲームやってる時の自分とか実は非常に多面的な存在であるはずなんですね。でむしろその労働者としての一面だけを見るんではなくてその一人の人間の中の多面性に注目すべきなんだというのが僕の基本的な考え方です。We aren't just our jobs.、Uh, we are part of a family. We have friends. We might play in a band.、Uh, we might enjoy playing video games. We are multifaceted beings. We're not just laborers.、Uh, and I've always thought that we should look at people as a whole. So, in the same way, we have to look at the people as a whole. So, in the same way, we have to look at the people as a whole. 家庭での自分が辛いっていう時にそれは複数ある自分の中の一つの部分が辛いにだけであって自分の全体を否定する自殺のような手段を取るべきじゃないというのが僕のメッセージです。And because we are multifaceted and there are different parts to our identity, if we're struggling at work or with our family, that doesn't, that shouldn't mean that the whole, that we negate the whole of who we are. It's just one part. Of who we are.、Uh, and so that's really what I try to get across. まあもう一方で、今日のように多様な社会を生きようとしますと、僕たちはいつも同じ人間として他者と接していても、多様な他者とうまいかんうまく環境を築くことはできないと思うんですね。バックグラウンドの違う人たちとコミュニケーションを図ろうとすると、どうしても僕自身がいろいろな人間になって、ある人向きの自分、また別の人向きの自分と、自分が内的に分化するせざるを得ません。社会が多様になれば、僕自身が内的に多様になる必要があると思っています。I also think that as society becomes more diverse, we need to become more diverse in ourselves. We need to, in order to be able to communicate with people from different backgrounds.、えー、実は僕はこういう考えを、まあ、インディビジュアル、個人という考えに対して、文人、ディビジュアルというふうな概念によって、えー、整理していて、えー、小説ではこういった人間関係に基づいて、えー、物語を考えながら、一方でその文人という概念についての、えー、まあ理論的な著作も書いています。I call this concept divisual as opposed to individual、uh, because we have different parts within ourselves.、Um, and this concept、uh, Appears in the stories that I write. I write a story, but I'm also、uh, theoretically exploring this concept of people as individual. で、まあ、先ほどの,あの視聴者の方のご質問にあった嘘を通じて正直になるっていうことなんですが、ある意味、えー、どんな小説家でも、えー、みんな小説というフィクションを通じて非常に正直になってるんじゃないでしょうか。僕は自分自身が僕として喋ってる時よりもある意味小説を通じていろんなことを書いてる時の方が正直になれてるという気がしますし逆に僕が非常に評価する小説というのは作者がフィクションを通じて正直になってる作品をまあ評価するんですね作者がフィクションを通じて自分を偽ってる小説というのは逆説的ですけどもあまりいい小説じゃないんじゃないかと僕は考えます。The, as to the、uh, reader's question about telling the truth through lies, I think that's something that all novelists do.、Um, I certainly feel like I'm more truthful、uh, as a writer than I am、uh, myself, that there, that there are truths that I, that I tell through my writing. And the novels that I tend to like are similar.、Um, I, I, it, it may seem、uh, counterintuitive, but I, I don't tend to like novels where the novelist is trying to be someone else. Thank you.、Um, just kind of following on from this line of questioning,、um, having your protagonist, Guido, being a lawyer. Allows you to give the reader glimpses of various social issues in Japan. And one of the issues that Kido himself is grappling、mm. with is his own responsibility towards society, particularly in the wake of the Great East Earthquake. Is this awareness of social issues and the individual's responsibility to society、mm. important to you as a writer and in your writing?、Mm. 
そうですねあの、まあ、僕の世代は日本のロストジェネレーションと言われたようなあの職を得るのに非常に苦労した世代なんですね、まあ、大体今の40代の世代がそう言われてますがそれはまあ日本のまあ景気、まあ、経済状態が非常に悪化したせいでその職を得るのが難しくなってしまったんですが新自由主義的な風潮の中でそれはその職を得,ら得ることはできないのは自己責任だと自分の努力が足りないからだと、えー、批判された世代でもあります。My generation is known as the lost generation. It's a generation,、uh, we're in our 40s now, who had a lot of trouble finding work when we were younger、um, because of the worsening economy.、Uh, but in this neoliberal society, the problems that we have are、uh, seen as being our own fault. We didn't try hard enough. Yes, but I'm a very important problem, and I'm a very important problem. えー、日本人が置かれている状況を描くときには、まあ、例えば、ケンローチ監督が貧困について描くときのように、それはあくまで個人の努力の有無の問題ではなくて、社会的な問題なんだという視点を非常に重視しています。So when I'm showing how people live, when I'm showing poverty, for example,、um, I don't want to be showing that as, as a lack of effort on the, individual part, on the individual's part. It's a bit like Ken Loach's films. I want to be showing that as a result of the society that they live in. ですから、一人の登場人物を描いて、その登場人物のキャラクターの魅力によって幸せになったり不幸になったりするという小説はあまり好きではなくて、やっぱりその,しょその人が不幸になったり幸せになったりすることの背景には、非常に大きな社会的な問題が横たわっているということを。丹念に描くというのが僕の小説のスタイルでもあります。I like novels where not, not where a protagonist is happy or unhappy because of who they are as a person, but where you see how、uh, society and the background、uh, of that society is, is coming into play, and that's also the kind of novels that I write. ですからそのような物語、そのような、えー、物語を、えー、無理なく描くために。主人公をどういう設定にしたらいいのかということをいつも考えていて、マチネの終わりにという小説では、えー、女性の登場人物をジャーナリストという、えー、仕事にしましたし、今回の小説では弁護士という職業にを選びました。And I always think about what story and、um, what, what story I can write that will allow me to show what's going on in the background in society. So with、um, At the end of the matinee,、uh, one of the protagonists is a journalist, and in this case, we have a lawyer. Thank you. Thank you, Hiranis. And then I've got lots more questions for you, and I'm sure our audience will too. But I think it's a good moment to turn to Eli and talk about the, the translation.、Um, as I warned you earlier, I wanted to ask you what the challenges of translating man actually were, whether it was the voice. The dialogue or other issues. And there's an interesting question in the QA about this,、um, which says A man has a unique style of storytelling. The personality of the narrator is not hidden behind the text. We can see how the narrator is watching, commenting on the central character, Kido, while Kido is investigating X case. Did you feel any difficulties translating the story with such a strong personality of the narrator?、Um, yeah, I, I personally don't find that the narrator has such a strong personality.、Um, the narrator has a consistent voice,、um, but the narrator's perspective tends to be filtered through one of the two protagonists, Rie or Kido. And、uh, so, when it's from Rie's perspective, I think the narration takes on elements of Rie's personality and thought processes. And the same is true also for Kido.、Um, there are definitely、uh, novels you could find that,、uh, in which the narrator is、uh, a lot more intrusive.、Um, as to the translation, translation challenges,、um, so. Dialogue was definitely not a challenge with this novel.、Um, Hirano san, with his dialogue, I find that each of his characters have a distinctive manner of speech, a distinctive voice. And I don't know if he does this intentionally. And actually, I'd like to 
maybe ask him this later, but um, the characters often seem to have speech tags, <laughs> which is a technique uh, where you uh, give characters a particular phrase that they use or uh, maybe a particular sentence ending, and that indicates uh, that that is that particular character. And so uh, when translating um, dialogue like that, it's just a simple matter of finding a speech tag uh, in English that matches the one in the Japanese. And so uh, translating the dialogue was just a pleasure. Um, of course, I did rearrange the order of uh, things like speech attribution words like said and shouted and so on, because the ways in which the uh, prose flows between uh, uh, flows into dialogue and out of dialogue in uh, Japanese is very different from English. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, uh, the dialogue was very smooth and enjoyable to translate. Um, uh, the challenging part was definitely related to voice, but um, specifically uh, Kido's internal monologue was really challenging. Because as we've already gone over several times, uh, Hirano-san is a, a very uh, philosophical writer. And so there's elements of philosophy in, in Kido's thought processes. Uh, Kido is a very cerebral sort of character. And sometimes he'll just get totally lost in his head and he'll, he'll forget where he is. And there are also elements of poetry woven in. Uh, sometimes it can be poetic and it can be moving and it's told in a semi stream of consciousness style. So uh, I have to work very hard to try to get the sentences to flow together because the stream of consciousness uh, flow is very different in Japanese. Um, so yeah, I would say that Kido's internal monologue was the really uh, the most challenging part. It required a lot of work and finessing. Um, Rie was difficult at points, but uh, not as much as Kido. Thanks, Eli. Um, yeah, no, and you did a, a great job with it. Um, Hirana san has, has Eli just revealed one of your secrets about the dialogue? Could you recognize what he was saying about the, the speech tags that he was talking about? So, this is a lot of people who are living in the world. So, I was able to get a lot of people who are living the world. And the people who are living in the world are living in the world. And the people who are living in the world are living in this is the first time I've heard Eli say that, so it actually makes me really uh, happy that he picked up on those speech tags. They do really give you a sense of a character's personality uh, when you're writing in Japanese. So yes, they are intentional and Eli never asked me about them. So I'm, I'm very um, impressed that, that that was something that he picked up on and has managed to translate. Excellent. I, I thought, uh, thank you, uh, Hirano-san, and, and I, I thought that they were intentional. <laughs> and uh, I just, because of those speech tags and, and other elements of the voice, it just, the dialogue is, translating your dialogue was very straightforward. So uh, thank you for, for writing something that was uh, easy on me. <laughs> did, you, did you have to ask Hirano-san many questions? Did you collaborate on the translation? Um, um, I wouldn't go so far as to say collaboration, but um, there was a certain stage in the translation process um, towards the end of the first sort of final draft. Um, saying the first final draft is sort of strange, but I mean the draft that I uh, felt was ready for the publisher. Uh, when I got to the stage where I was uh, finalizing that draft, um, there were a number of queries that accumulated, and I would uh, usually, I think, divide them up into to chunks of maybe, I don't know, six chapters each or, or so, and send them to uh, Hirano-san. And often he would just very quickly be able to answer them by email. Uh, but some of the questions were a little bit more complex and nuanced. And so uh, I, I did uh, meet with him in person uh, a couple of times in order to just discuss some of the translation queries with him. Um, Hirano-san, uh, he really, understands that translation is an art. 
So uh, I never felt at any time that he was trying to steer the translation in a particular direction. Um, and uh, his, his contributions to the translation through answering my queries were, were always very helpful and illuminating. That's great to know. Um, Hirana san how did you find the translation process? Um, I know that you've been translated into a number of different languages and that you're widely read in a number of countries mm -hmm. from France to China. Um, and when you're writing, are you, are you aware of the fact that your, your novels may be, you know, traveling around the globe? Or is that not something that you think of when you're writing? Mm -hmm. あんまり意識せずに書いてましたが、最近多くの本が翻訳されるようになっていて、やっぱり少し多少意識するようになりました。I didn't used to be aware of it as I was writing, but a lot more of my work is being translated nowadays, so I am slightly more aware of it. まあ、日本の文化状況とやっぱり世界の状況はまあかなりギャップのあるところもあって、まあ、特にただ世界的なに共有 世界で共有されている問題というのも今日あるわけですよね。例えば環境問題だとか、まあ、ジェンダーに対する認識だとかっていうのは世界的に共有されているので、あんまり日本の中でその考えていることをだけをまあ、日本で日本人にとっては普通
completely anonymously is a very difficult thing to do, but some people do. Um, but I think maybe because it's so difficult to do in real life, um, that may be why I wanted to, to write about it in a novel. Um, in both novels, um, you explore the impact of cultural memory and survivor's guilt, whether it's the Korean massacre mm. after the great Kanto earthquake of 1923, mm. um, you mentioned the 1945 atomic bomb in Nagasaki, and also more recently, um, the war in Iraq. I wanted to ask, why is this theme of cultural memory and survivor's guilt so important to you? そうですねやっぱりどんな大きな出来事があっても社会は自然と忘れていきますしまた忘れようとしていく力忘れさせ社会の中でなかったことにしようとする力もあると思います力もあると思いますそれが非常に国にとってネガティブな事件だったりするときにはもうなかったことにしてしまおうとするような力も社会にあると思います However big or significant an event is, society has the power to forget and society has the power to make us forget if it's, if it's、uh, something that's not to, in their interest. しかしそこに巻き込まれた個人っていうのは社会の中ではもう終わった出来事であったとしてもそのことを決して終わらせることはできずにずっとその記憶とともに生きてるっていうことが、まあ、非常によくあります。But for the people involved in that incident, how, even if it's the, it, the incident is over and done with as far as society is concerned, it hasn't ended for them. They live with the memories of that incident. コロナの間に愛する人を亡くした人、自分が非常に苦しんだ人というのは、社会がいくらそれを忘れても、えー、その思いとともにこの,この後も生き続けていくと思います。で、僕は文学者として注目したいのは、やっぱりそういう人たちなんですね。For example, coronavirus, the, the、um, numbers of、uh, infected people are increasing around the world, but in a few years' time, It will, we hope, have, have died down.、Uh, and at that point, at some point, we'll all forget about it and we'll go back to living our happy lives in society. But for the people who've lost loved ones or who've suffered themselves through coronavirus, they won't forget and they will continue to live with those memories. And those are the people that I want to focus in on in my writing. それからやっぱりそのまあ社会にとって非常にネガティブなことというのは社会ができたら忘れたいように忘れたいと考えるもんですがしかしいつもその問題がもう一度起こる可能性っていうのはあるわけですねですから戦争にせよえまあ犯罪にせよえまあ社会が忘れてはいけないっていうことは記憶し続けなければいけないっていうのがえこういった問題に取り組む僕のもう一つの理由です。Another reason that I... That I、um, like to feature this theme is that when something negative happens and society tries to forget about it, there's always the possibility that it could happen again,、um, be that a war, be that a crime.、Um, and so we need to remember for that reason. Thank you very much.、Um, There's another question、um, for Eli that I wanted to ask、um, from Cheryl Moran.、Um, she asks As Eli is a writer himself, did he feel that this influenced how he approached translating the work? Or does he feel that he keeps both skills very separate from one another? Eli? Oh,、uh, they definitely interact.、Um, so,、uh... Trans, literary translation and、uh, literary writing or writing of fiction,、uh, they're overlapping areas. So, for example,、uh, with style,、um, when you write a lot,、uh, you develop a certain style and, and you begin to、um, understand、uh, 
how to uh, have a grasp of vocabulary that you need in order to express certain moods and uh, also uh, the, the right types of words to express the particularities of characters. So um, from writing, when you start to translate, if, you, if, you've, if you're a writer, you're already equipped with a certain skill set around just crafting language. Um, and then on the flip side, um, translating fiction, especially fiction that's different than the sort of fiction that you write, it forces you to step outside of your comfort zone to a certain extent. It forces you to uh, try to express voices that maybe you would never have come up with yourself. Um, there are some similarities between my writing and uh, some other works of uh, Hirano-san's, uh, like, for example, his novel Dawn, uh, which is a, a science fiction work. Um, but this work, uh, A Man, is um, very distinct from anything that I've written and probably anything that I ever will write. But I learned a lot from it. Um, one example I can give is um, Hirano-san, in terms of setting the scene, uh, he, he, he sets the scene with a, a great economy of language. Um, he doesn't spend a lot of time, you know, describing a place unless he feels like it. And, um, so I, I tend to like to make, um, my writing more visual, but, um, through, through translating this, I discovered a new way of, um, really paring down descriptions of place. Um, I could give uh, other examples, but I think I'll stop there for now. Thanks, Eli. Um, and it's really interesting, this question of influence. There are a couple of questions I wanted to ask you, Hirano-san. Um, in both novels, you mentioned the Japanese writer, Ryunosuke Akutagawa. Is he one of mm. your influences? Um, who are your other influences in Japanese literature? And then there's a question in the Q&A box that's related to this, um, asking what you think is the reason of the great popularity of Dostoevsky in Japan? <笑><笑>うん。えっと、アクタリノスケはまあ、主に短編を書いた作家ですけども、やっぱり一時期非常に影響を受けました。それはその<笑> そのストーリーとかその内容もそうですけど、ま、文体の面においてもこれはなかなか翻訳しにくいことかもしれませんけど、あの非常にこうスタイリッシュなあのま、皇室だけれども、え、ま、明晰ないい文章を書いていて、え
何のために自分は生きてるのかでこの社会の価値観っていうのは全て崩壊していってしまうっていうようなその感覚が19世紀のペテルブルグをドステフスキーが描いていく時の雰囲気と近いものがあるんじゃないかとでラスコルニコフのどうして人殺しちゃいけないんだっていう問いが、えー、90年代以降の日本ではシリアスな問いとして受け止められたということがあったと思います。なぜ,なぜ殺してはいけないのかっていう当たり前の殺してはいけないっていうのは当たり前であるはずなのに非常にニヒリスティックな風潮の中でそのこと自体も分からなくなっているような状況っていうのが90年代以降あったんですね。でそういう,こうニヒリズムっていうものを通じて、えー、特に90年代以降日本人はドストエフスキーをもう一度再発見したんじゃないかと思います。はい um, I think recently... Um, since the, the Japanese economic bubble burst, there's been a sense of nihilism in Japan. And why are we here?、Uh, and that kind of chimes with, with Dostoevsky's depictions of 19th century Russia、um, and the questions that he asks, like, why, why, why aren't we allowed to kill people?、Um, and this sort of thing, which is, has been. Become a question that people actually ask since the 1990s in Japan with this, this sense of nihilism that I, that I mentioned.、Um, and I think that's one reason why people have been rediscovering Dostoevsky.、Um, and there's one follow up question from Margaret、um, asking to what, you, to what are you influenced by Abe Kobo? Personal identity, we women of the genes, Tanin no Kao, etc. はい、安倍公募も非常に強い影響を受けました。一つはその都市部の都市の匿名性っていう問題、それからアイデンティティの問題っていうのをやはり安倍公募も追求した作家で、えー、影響を受けました。Yes,、uh, very much so. As you say,、uh, the issues of、um, the anonymity of cities and identity are issues that 安倍公募 is also dealt with. ただ、安倍公房の時代は、どちらかというと、都市の複雑さに対して、その主人公が持っている情報量が少なすぎるために、その都市を不条理だと感じるっていう物語が、まあ、中心だったんですね。例えば、砂の女というような小説は、えー、その状況が持っている複雑さに対して、主人公が持っている情報が非常に限られているから、えー、彼はその,その世界を理解することはできないわけですね。ところが、今の場合は、えー、むしろフェイクも含めて個人が持っている情報が多すぎるために一体何が起こっているのかわからないという状況になっていると思います。そういう意味では安倍公房のも抱いていたこの世界がわからないというのと現代人が感じているこの世界がわからないというのはある意味ではあの真逆なんじゃないかというふうにも思っています。But、um, with 安倍公房、um, when he was writing,、uh, the problem Was that the protagonist could, didn't have enough information to understand what was going on, to understand the complexities、uh, of the city?、Um, as in Women of the Dunes,、um, they can't understand the world because they don't have enough information. The problem today, though, is that individuals have too much information, including fake news, and as a result of that, find it hard to, to understand the world around us. So, in a way, the, the problem of not understanding. The world around us is, is completely the, is caused by the, completely the opposite thing、um, to, to what it is in, in Abbe Corpus writing. Thank you.、Um, the questions are flooding into the QA box now, but we're running out of time. So I just want to ask a couple of questions. There are a couple of interesting questions around translation for Eli.、Um, I'll read them both to you. Um, and then you can answer them. The first is from Jonathan Young, who asks Have there ever been times when you felt unable to convey a certain nuance of an author's voice in English translation? And if so, how do you deal with such challenges? And then the other question is、um, from Esther Davis, who says Japanese people are very aware of the visual aspect of text. As a trans as translator, Do you ensure that pages look more visually pleasing by increasing paragraphs, etc., or does that not enter into your translation?、Um, okay, so the first question 
uh, was Okay, I've got the visual one in my head. What was the first question? You can give me one word and I'll remember it. Um, the challenges of being unable to convey a sound. Ah, yes. So I, um, all the time, I there are things I can't translate. In fact, I feel like in a certain sense, translation is a process of constantly failing. Um, every word and expression that I come across almost is just impossible to turn into English. And so if I try, I, I'm just destined to fail. And so uh, what the interesting part of translation is where you go from that failure is where, where you take uh, the language from there. And um, so for me, uh, you know, there's a process in translation where uh, I will originally go through the Japanese and translate into English and try to capture everything I possibly can, which uh, which I inevitably fail, but I do my best. And then I go through a second time and I look at the Japanese and I try to clean up the English a little bit. Um, and uh, in the process, you know, I'm losing all sorts of things, but it's inevitable because I want it to read like English. Um, but the really interesting stage is when uh, in the next pass, when I just throw the Japanese aside and I just try to focus on the English and forget about the Japanese. And I work to try to make the text read as though it originally had been written in English. And um, if it goes well, that's really where the, the magic happens and the translation starts to sing. Um, okay, so uh, what was the second question again? It was um, about the visual aspect of the text. Oh, yeah. So, and so, um, of the visual aspect and whether that plays into your translation. At all. So I, I didn't add very much to the text, I don't think. Um, I don't really add things. I, I do rearrange uh, a lot. Um, I move things around because, you know, English is uh, uh, SVO language, subject, verb, object, and, and Japanese is um, SOV, subject, object, verb. And so, you know, you, the verb comes at the end in Japanese, so you get the good bit is way at the end. And for English readers, um, that can be very jarring and confusing. And it, it doesn't just extend to individual sentences. In fact, the good bit is often left to the end of the paragraph or the end of the page. Or um, so I'm obvious. I'm often taking pieces and just moving them around um, so that it's more uh, readable in English. And that applies also to visual description. But uh, I don't. I don't really add anything, uh, or not very much anyway. That's great. This is um, my last question is actually building on this theme of the visual and it's um, a summary of a question from Hiro because we're running out of time. But basically he's asking um, Hir Hirano-san how you feel about what the difference is between novels and films, the two different genres of the arts, and whether your novels are more or less conducive to being made into films than other writers. Um, because apparently both films, both books mm. we're talking about today have been made into films. そうですね。まず二時間っていう映画の長さからすると、僕の小説はちょっと長すぎると思います。Well, first thing to say is that I think my my books are probably a little bit long to be made into a two-hour film. で、まあその長さの割に先ほども言ったように非常に複雑にレイヤーが重なっているので、えー、そのまま映画で再現するというのはまあほぼ不可能で、やっぱり必ずどっか監督が表現したいところだけを取り出すという形になります。They're also, as I mentioned earlier, very complex and made up of different layers. So pretty much impossible, I would say, to make into a film. And you're, of, necess of necessity, any film is only going to show the bits that the director has chosen to show. まあ、映画大好きなので、一人の映画ファンとして他の作品の映画を見るときは楽しめるんですけど、自分の作品を見るときには、まあ、いつもドキドキしていますが、まあ、でも映画を作、映画にしてくれるってこと自体は非常に
、まあ、言葉の方がよりまあ明確に描けるところっていうのはあって。まあ、小説が得意なことと映画が得意なことっていうのはやっぱりそれぞれにあの相当違うとは思います。I think these, these depictions of the inner world of the individual can be partly shown by a good actor, but they can be shown much more clearly using words. And that's something that, that novels are good at and films are good at other things. So I think they, they do have、um, very different capabilities. Thank you very much, Your Honor. So, I think the message there is you know, watch the films if you want to, but what you really need to do if you haven't already is to read <laughs> Your Honor's son's novels available in English or obviously in Japanese. <laughs>、mm. um, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time this afternoon.、Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, for your questions, and thank you to the Japan Foundation and the Cheltenham Literature Festival for hosting us. But thank you very much to Keichiro Hirano and to Eli William for sharing their thoughts with us、um, about both of you, about this wonderful novel,、um, and to Bethan Jones for her excellent interpretation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.、Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I just want to ask that、uh, final question, you know, taking my advantage you know, of、uh, being a moderator.、Um, this is the Uh, latest novel, isn't it, Mr. Hirano?、Um, it's, it's Japanese, it was in Japanese, but it's, it's just translated roughly that true mind or honesty or whatever. But can you just explain us you know, briefly what the、um, um, story is about? Ah, hi, eh, ma, ある青年がお母さんを、まあ、近未来の日本を舞台にした小説で、まあ、ある青年がお母さんを亡くしてしまうんですけど、えーかまあ、彼はシングルマザーの家庭で育ったのでそのお母さんを亡くした悲しさに耐えられずに AI を通じてコンピューター上にお母さんを再現しようとするんですねでそのお母さんと一緒に生きていこうとするんですけれども実はお母さんがの心の中に抱えた一つのこう秘密っていうのに気がついて、まあ、それを AI を通じて知ることができるのかどうかっていうところから物語が始まっていくという小説で、まあ、僕の小説なんで格差社会とか環境問題とかやっぱり社会的な問題とか、まあ、思想的な問題とかいうのが、まあ、そこにたくさんこう積み重なって、えー、出来上がっている小説になっています。Uh, it's、uh, a story about a young man.、Uh, it's set in the near future in Japan, and he is raised by a, a single mother,、uh, and his mother dies. And he is so sad at her death that he tries to recreate his mother using artificial intelligence and he lives with this version of his mother but discovers that she has a secret in her heart、uh, and tries to get to the bottom of that secret via the ai、uh, but of course because it's my novel、um, it does、uh, touch on a whole range of、um, social problems uh, environmental um, poverty philosophical issues etc I, I wrote a review of this book.、Um, I, I think that the current translation of the title is True Intentions,、uh, if I'm not mistaken. And、uh, if for、uh, all the listeners out there, especially those in、uh, the UK,、um, I would say it has、uh, some, bears some resemblance to the Black Mirror series in terms of、uh, the simulations and、uh, social critique. But、uh, it's told in a, in a more sensitive and, and literary way. Has it been translated into English or other foreign languages, Eli? Do you know? I don't know about foreign languages, but there's no, no English translation. All right, okay. So, I mean, among the audience, also the Eli, if you want to challenge that, and the <laughs> they spoke into English, I'm in the most welcome. You know, you know the, one that, the book of his that I really want to translate is Dawn. Uh, oh, which、yeah. I mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's.、Um... As well, as well. Right. Okay,、um, that's all、uh, for today. Thank you very much. I thoroughly enjoyed that、um, conversation. And then thanks goes to Hirano san and Irai. And then, of course, and above all, Kate, who prepared a very, very interesting book,、uh, that questions. As I actually show you, that's,、um, you know, it is going to be you know, made into the film. And also, it has been already made into the film. And they released、uh, whatsoever. So you can see that、uh, who played what kind of roles on that、uh, cover jacket. 
you know, right, right, like this. Anyway, um, thank you so much uh, for joining. Um, I actually put that uh, link or Cheltenham on YouTube. Hirano-san's uh, pre-recording interview is still available, so please uh, keep checking because um, uh, both today's conversation and then pre-recording interview are compatible and they also the put together you will see more about Hirano-san's world and the both work at the end of the matinee and the uh, man. So it's very useful to uh, uh, watch that pre-recording session. So thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Betham. I hope you recover from cold because I couldn't actually see your face. Anyway, thank you for your nice translation. And then I hope you have a wonderful weekend mm -hmm. and a nice afternoon today. Thank you, Hirano-san and Irai and Kate. So goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.